Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another movie review. Uh, we're in front of the King shelves here, so we're doing a Stephen King adaptation. And now we are going to start talking about Pet Cemetery 2019. Uh, the TLDR, for any of you King fans who come across my channel or subscribe to my channel, um, and you just want to know my opinion on whether or not you should go spend your hard-earned money um, to watch this movie in the theaters, I would say definitely not. Um, right now, I am sitting on that line as far as a rating is concerned. Um, a line that is right at Redbox. Like, I'd pay $2 for this movie and not be mad. Me, I spent 25 bucks to take me and my wife out to the movie, date night kind of thing. Um, so that was the first upset. Uh, she liked it. She enjoyed it. She had, I guess uh, as a non-King fan, she has no uh, level to judge this at. She liked it for the, for the movie that it was. That's fine. She's seen the original film. Um, she, I don't think she enjoyed that one quite as bit as much as this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say as a Stephen King fan, this is not a Stephen King fan's movie. Um, if you're just looking for your average run-of-the-mill horror movie, um, then yeah, certainly. But if you're coming to watch Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, boy, this ain't it. Um, my first uh, non-spoiler uh, discussion section I'm going to be talking about is the absolutely atrocious casting of Ellie. Um, I thought she, the little girl who played her in such a pivotal role in this iteration of the Pet Cemetery story, she she was terrible. Um, the little girl had a she had a lot of a lot of weight on her shoulders to carry, you know, the torch gauge um, in the first movie, um, and I guess you could call it a spoiler, but it's in the fucking trailer. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. You're gonna have such a huge twist to the story. I actually thought it would be it would have been awesome um, had I watched the movie not knowing anything about that, and that's what I was trying to do. But the comments section just would not let it go. Um, and finally, someone snuck the spoiler in that was in there for the uh, for the uh, for the for the trailer. The big change. Um, the change isn't even what I'm what I'm mad about. It could have worked. It could have very well worked had they gotten an actress. Uh, a young girl that could pull that off. She can't, her makeup was so incredibly bad. The acting was absolutely atrocious. Um, I think the only thing they got right, and now we're going to go into spoiler territory because everything else I have to say is a spoiler. It's going to end up being a rant video. I know it is. Um, but if, if you're a Stephen King fan, you're, you're likely going to go see this movie without me telling you yes or no anyways. So... Um, I would think. Uh, but the the only thing they got right as far as this new change, this new direction for the Wendigo or whatever you want to think possesses the bodies is the the corpse was talkative more this time than just saying, you know, not fair or daddy or things that Gage said in the original uh, film. Now, in the book version, the demon or whatever, it is very talkative, and it can be cheesy, but that is not, that is not to the positive, because that was one of the things in the book, that, probably the only thing that ever felt odd in the book to me and out of place was that kind of exorcist, your mother sucks cocks in hell, Karis, kind of attitude from the demon. And I guess during that time, that was just something that, you know, writers were doing you know it was it was more of ooh let the evil talk whereas i think gage 19 what 89 i can't remember when the first movie was made i think it was 89 um gage was far more scary in the original than ellie was in this one um now one of my biggest problems with this is something that my friend cody tidwell hit on when he had watched the trailer I had not, and he said, the film just looks cheap. I was still trying to tell everybody, hey, guys, let's calm down. You know, I was even saying, going as far as saying, because I still hadn't watched the trailer, even though I knew the twist. Um, 
I went as far as saying, you know, that book is full of dreams, so maybe that isn't the change. You know, just trying to give everybody a chance, give the, give the film a chance. I was trying to be the cheerleader. Boy, and I wish I would have kept my fat mouth shut. Um, cause, because there, there's, a, there's several scenes in the dark in this movie, and every single one of them looks like there's some CGI just there for fucking no reason whatsoever. Um, could they not afford to shoot at night? Uh, could they not find a decent location? What happened? Why were we that? Why were we uh, shown this terrible CGI darkness that looked straight out of like Disney XD? I mean, I'm not shitting you at all. It looked like an episode of Zack and Cody. And <laughs> I can't wait for like Zack and Cody fans to be like, that wasn't on Disney HD. Or uh, XD. I don't know. I, all I know is that my kids watch these shows. They watch Disney XD and they watch Zack and Cody. But I remember, you know, like walking in when one of those shows was on. They'd be like out in the woods or something or someplace dark. And that's how bad the fake dark was in this movie. It was just so, so bad. The new Gage is absolutely pointless. There's, there's no emotional connection to him whatsoever. There's no emotional connection to Ellie. There's no emotional connection to anybody in this film whatsoever. They even nerfed Judd. The simple character that Judd was, they completely nerfed him um, by making his just completely destroying the relationship between him and Lewis. Him, the, the book is mostly told from Lewis Creed's point of view. In this one, it almost feels like they were going for a psycho-esque kind of thing, because at the beginning, it kind of feels like, ooh, Ellie's the main character, kind of like they did in The Dark Tower, where they're like, ooh, Jake's maybe the main character. Um, we spent very little time with Lewis, even during the, I don't, I don't like the new Pascal, that, that just seemed like something, in, in the original story, it felt there was a, there was an emotional connection there. I don't know why, but there was, and this time there absolutely wasn't one. Um, in fact, I kept I kept on having to take a du double a, a double you know, like the the makeup on the dude's face can't be that bad, and it was. Um, I, I think that's one of the things that uh, what was her name Mary Lambert or whatever, got right in the first film, is that everything looked at least a a bit convincing. Um, Whereas in this one, there is so much that looks wrong. You can tell the church is just a dirty cat with goop in it, with goop in its fur. Uh, you can tell <laughs> there's even some fake, uh, like, sun cracking they do to Judd's face that is really, really bad. I don't know if they were planning on shooting in a lower resolution. Um, so that was terrible. <coughs> I think um, the mother, um, what, what's her name, Ellen? I think the mother was the best actress. Uh, Lewis, it's that guy from Terminator Genesis or whatever it was. Um, I didn't care much for him. Um, he could have been anybody. Nothing about this movie has any heart. And I think that's the biggest complaint I have. That's the biggest complaint I'm going to walk away with. Is there is no heart to this. We are just m meant to feel bad because this man loses a child. Um, and then he go, he goes crazy. I, I never saw that descent in in this version of Lewis. It's almost like the heartless, you know, soulless, uh, The Shining that Kubrick did, which he he sucked all of the heart out of it and tried to pump as much art into it as possible. Pretty shots, the discordant music, all that stuff. In this one. It just feels like somebody taking the book bit by bit and going, okay, well, how about if we tweak this? Um, and at the same time, every time they tweak something, they just, they just took all the, the motivation out of the characters. Um, I think the biggest th complaint I have, uh, one of the things that I've already said is I hated the relationship between Lewis and Judd here because it didn't feel earned. It just felt like, you know, these two neighbors that were just dealing with this really weird situation. And of course, the ending is is pretty shit. Um, the very last scene, that is an that is an almost perfect ending for book and original movie. That is the perfect ending. That is the only way it can end, so maybe... Bruh, it's 3 o'clock in the morning here. I'm literally out here at 3 o'clock in the morning and someone's racing a bike up and down the street. Um, welcome to Alabama. Um, but... 
shoot, where was I, where was I even going with this? I don't know. Um, but there was, uh, the, I think it was the, the relationship between Judd and Lewis never felt earned. It just felt like something that was tacked on. It wasn't unbelievable. I didn't believe any of these characters. Um, I thought for just a split second, and this may be a huge spoiler, I'm not sure. I mean, I already said there was going to be spoilers from that point on, but, um, I almost thought they were going to kill both kids. And I think that would have been a great... Oh, the ending is where I was going. Sorry about that. Um, so, the ending, they have, like, the whole family, like, they're gonna get the family together, you know, it just, it felt really, really silly, um, and f I think it was an attempt to try to make a perfectly dark piece of media darker. I think they were struggling with that, how are we going to push it one step farther, and they completely and utterly failed. Um, but that's my thoughts on Pet Cemetery. Good Lord, let me know what you think down there in the comments below. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been, unfortunately, a negative movie review of one of my favorite Stephen King properties. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.